we got Egberto in the house. Egberto Willies, who's always giving us a national perspective with politics done right. What's going on? Good morning. You guys have such a great, entertaining, fact-based, in-your-face show. I was enjoying the show as I was writing my blog. You guys are great. But you guys got me kind of turned on when, when Robbie mentioned that 737 crash. Because here is the deal. That 737 crash is the perfect encapsulation of what capitalism is all about. I mean, do you know that those planes that crashed, they didn't want to spend, I mean, Boeing was actually charging for people's safety. In other words, everything can be commoditized. They were charging. They were charging the airliners to say, if you want a safer plane, we will, we will add another sensor on so that the computer can do some better calculations and not fly the plane into the ground or not fly the plane into the water. Perfect example of what capitalism is all about. And guess who I had on my show yesterday? Richard Wolf, who looked at me and he said, Egberto, let me tell you something. And by the way, Richard Wolf is the preeminent economist on, uh, on, on Marxism and all these other isms out there. He really, uh, he, he publishes a whole lot of books. And this is what he told me. And this is interesting, folks. He said, capitalism, feudalism, and slavery, they're all the same. He said, there are masters that tell the masses what to do. We just paint them differently. They have a lifespan and then they die. He said, capitalism is now in that phase where it's about to die because of all the, he said, look, don't get me wrong. Capitalism did a few good things, but guess what? Slavery did a, a few good things too. Yes, on the backs of black folk, but did that, I, I saw the look on your face, Tamara. Your face was so obvious. I am not speaking spiritually. I'm not speaking ethically. I'm not speaking morally. I am speaking about absolutes here. They enslaved people. They got a hell of a lot done with our labor, and that's why we talk reparations now. Hey, we gave that labor, huh? Well, we didn't give the labor. Yeah. We were forced to give the labor. This morning, I was going to do some writing about millennials, and as more Americans uh, start to see the degradation of this system when it comes to all the subsequent generations, what I think starts to happen is the system falls apart. The only thing that's going to determine if this system falls apart nicely is if folks like us make that landing softer than it would otherwise be. Make the landing softer. I think you need to elaborate just a little bit. Give me something there. Don't leave me with that because that'll be a question I have for you later. Okay, there is an option that this country has and we spoke about this several shows back and that is when people don't have anything to lose, they have nothing to lose. And what that means is the following. That person who lives in the gated community, that person who uh, has a car, who wants to have a nice life, they don't want anything to interrupt it. They don't want to have anything that's gonna make them uncomfortable. So what that means is the riots we saw in, in different cities in, this, in let's say Ferguson and all these other places, that will be the main, mainstay as this system crumbles because as people have nothing else, they're going to take what they need to survive. And the reality is that, that is what America has always done as well. America has said, we must have oil to survive. Therefore, any country, any entity that stops the flow of oil, we will blow them to smithereens. And you know what poor people are going to say? Eventually, anybody that stops us from eating, anybody that stops us from living, we are going to make their lives difficult as we take what is necessary for us to survive. So that's the soft landing. The soft landing now is the following. We are there to say, hey, rich people that have been ripping us off for all these decades and centuries, stop it. Medicare for all, basic income, and all these things, you better start giving these things. Medicare for all, affordable housing, living wage, workforce housing. And if, think about it, if it was you, and again, I'm not justifying, but you can't have, I can't sit and be content with my ramen noodles while I watch you eat a smorgasbord of seafood and you know I me, mean? and I'm, and that's what happens in these transitioning communities. Literally, one right next door to each other. But you don't want to steal from your neighbor because you live right next door to your neighbor. So you go to Buckhead, and Buckhead has been so insulated, right, so comfortable 
their concept of life is completely different. You know, their quality of life is completely different. Exactly. And we have to understand the social currency of race because that's what happens when, when the discussion starts. It's like, well, rape, you know, slavery happened forever years ago, but your social currency is still very, very valuable today. It's interesting that you mentioned that about slavery and the, 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 the impact that it has progressively as even for the new generation. Because that's what I was talking to. This this guy in here looked at me and I, I gave him the picture. I looked at him and I said, if I give you a head start, nobody will ever catch up. And then he says, well, there's Oprah. Well, there's brought the Johnson who owned BET. And I looked at him and I said, let me tell you something. Let's start speaking in the aggregate. And there are also uh, poor white people living in Appalachia. I said, but that is not the aggregate. If we take the sum total of wealth in this country and how it was aggregated, there is absolutely no way. And even, even reparations as we talk about it wouldn't do it. We need a complete systemic change that's gonna allow everybody equal access to success. But here's the other thing that, that the part that I get into trouble for, ill-gotten wealth should be taken away. I mean, you don't do it in one big blurb, but the way you do it is sort of how Elizabeth Warren is talking about. She won't say it, but she understands it. And that is taxing the holy hell out of wealth. When you buy your car, which is an asset, you pay a tax. When you buy a home, which is an asset, you pay a tax. Why the hell aren't we charging a tax on stocks? Why aren't we charging a tax on bonds and all these other issues? And that's what I mean by soft landing. Instead of going to them with the pitchforks, we're going to tell them, pay or else the pitchforks come and make no mistake, warning them we exactly and make no mistake there's an overall we subsidize boeing boeing yes. receives considerable so in essence we paid for that right we pay for the faa we pay for the government a lot of people often tell me i don't believe in government actually someone who's watching and that baffles me because you pay for something you don't believe in and you won't try to reform it they'll tell me i'll rather go around government what First of all, I just want to say something about Richard Wolf. Slavery in this country was not a separate system from capitalism. It was capitalism. It was the core of capitalism. And the fact that there was unpaid labor, forced labor that was involved, is actually a part of the system that still is with us. We have forced labor today. We have people who are incentivized not by their way, but by coercion. It includes people who are in prison. It includes people who are undocumented. And it includes people who are in precarious labor positions where they don't have any job security. There's a big element of coercion. That's what y'all were at the top of the hour. We want to thank Mr. Egberto for always coming on, giving us a national political update and pouring gasoline on our fire. <laughs> thank you so kindly. I enjoyed being here. And, and one quick closing statement is, David, thank you for that new phrase that I will actually add to my blog. Coerced labor equal slavery. Thank you, brother. Thank Tamara, you. Robbie, David, have a wonderful day. Great thank show. You. Thank, thank you. you.